uh, Eddington. I'm Dale Feek, uh, chair and spokesperson for Washington County Citizen Action Network in uh, Washington County. Chair Addington and commissioners and congratulations to Sam Barrasso for the birth of a new child. So I sent him a congratulatory email already. So congratulations. A couple of topics I wanna talk about. The Rules Advisory Committee for Greenhouse Gas Rules. Uh, in the past, as you know, I've been involved in this for many years now, coming to Environmental Equality Commission meetings in person and through Zoom. And in the past, the uh, Blue, Ribbon, Blue Ribbon Advisory Committee for Water and the Air Advisory Committees have been weighted real high on industrial people. And they worked on the basis of consensus. And from my point of view, they did not work well at all based upon the mission statements of of uh, DEQ, Environmental Equality Commission, for the protection and enhancement of land, air, and water. So I much appreciate the idea that those committees are not, a, uh, that the Rules Committee for Greenhouse Gas is not gonna work on a consensus. It's gonna be worked on facts and sound scientific evidence and considering all that, and then having the experts weigh all that and make sound recommendations. So I much appreciate that way of operating. And related to what I think you said, Chair Addington, uh, or maybe know what was said in the recycling presentation, uh, it's gonna be listen and compromise. Boy, do we need a lot of that. So we need listening and compromising and listen to everybody's point of view, but come up again with the best thing to protect, uh, well, the recycling stuff, but also in greenhouse gases, protect uh, the quality of air. I sent uh, a written comment to you for the November meeting, but as you know, you had to postpone that till today. And that had to do with transportation, in particular the uh, jet flights, the, the, the air industry. And most people don't address that, but when we had 9-11, uh, there was a chance for scientists to actually check to see the impact of the jet contrails. And it, the evidence was very clear scientifically that that had high impact on dimming the sun, which then means it lowered the uh, degrees of, of global warming. Now it's a, a catch-22. Thank you, Stephanie. It's a catch-22, but please take a look at it. I sent it to you. I sent it to uh, Representative uh, Susan McLean because she's one of the four co-chairs of the Transportation Committee. So she has that and other people do. And I sent it to our county commissioners. So please take a look at what I sent to you before related to dimming in the sun and greenhouse gas. I appreciate everybody's hard work. You commissioners in particular, I'm so impressed with the staff of DEQ and the director and director Richard Whitman's guidance of that. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Appreciate hearing from you. Uh, thank you, commissioners. Um, the next person on my list is uh, Dan Sears, whose line will now be unmuted. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yep, we've got you. Great. Uh, Chair George, members of the commission, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. My name is Dan Sears. I'm the conservation director for Columbia Riverkeeper and a member of the Power Pass Frack Gas Coalition. I speak to you today out of concern about a major potential polluter attempting to take root in the area near Umatilla, Oregon. The perennial wind chaser station frack gas power plant would generate 415 megawatts of power. The Peaker plant would generate 1 million tons of greenhouse gas pollution each year or more, depending on its hours of operation. It would be located close to another major polluter, the Hermiston Generating Plant. So that's together, you know, these two facilities would generate about a hundred tons of smog forming VOC pollution each year. Uh, they'd cause potential health effects for people living in the area and, and having to breathe this air, uh, which is an issue in the Columbia Basin. Perennial would be a major water user and a potential discharger of water as well. 
the 415 megawatt frack gas power plant conflicts with Oregon's goals for reducing climate change emissions. Um, if in several years, Perennial has completed construction and started to burn large quantities of frack gas um, at this plant to make electricity, we would be failing to meet the climate crisis. So DQ has some important decisions to make. First, we urge the agency to hold Perennial accountable for illegally beginning road work without obtaining a stormwater permit in violation of the Clean Water Act. The actions the agency took uh, allowed Perennial to undermine Oregon rules and laws that are meant to foster a safe and sustainable energy system. We thank DQ for granting an extension for commenting on this stormwater permit. This occurred just today. And in September 2020, Perennial broke ground on a road uh, to its power plant in an effort to meet a construction deadline in its FX site certificate. We documented- seconds remaining. Thank you. And, and I just want to say uh, my, uh, my comments will have been shared with you in writing. So anything I don't get to hear in, in my uh, spoken comments, you can, you can read. Um, I just want to just stress in closing that this is a major potential polluter in the state of Oregon. And we rely on DEQ to have an orderly process for reviewing this project and protecting Oregon from the pollution that would come from it. So I, I thank the agency for its work so far. Okay, Th thank you, Mr. Sears. Um, and I, Richard, I saw you scribbling notes and I know we have the written comments. So um, a couple of those items, uh, we can be sure that we're looking at that. Uh, okay, Stephanie. Uh, thank you, Commission. Um, the next person I have, your display name is listed as 350 PDX, and your line should now be unmuted mm -hmm. for your comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, uh, my name is Deneen O'Rourke. Um, good afternoon. Thanks for, um, for having this. Um, I'm the campaign manager at 350 PDX. And um, on behalf of our thousands of volunteers and members, I too am calling to express my concern about the perennial wind chaser station in Umatilla County that Dan just mentioned, and to urge the DEQ to take enforcement action against this project. If built, perennial would be one of Oregon's top sources of greenhouse gas pollution, generating roughly 1 million tons of carbon pollution each year. And at a time of immense and devastating climate crisis felt in our own communities this fall, we really see this as unacceptable. And it's the direct opposite direction that our state must be heading in. Um, DEQ should not issue any permits for this new major fracked gas power plant, um, including the stormwater permit that they're seeking right now. Um, we, we believe that issuing these piecemeal permits to this project um, could lead to a haphazard and partial construction and damage, and it sets a really terrible precedent. Why should a major polluter be given special treatment and be able to sidestep rules and laws? Further, um, DEQ should not permit the power plant when it clearly undermines our state's goals for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. One million tons of greenhouse gas pollution each year would blow a hole in Oregon's climate goals. The Environmental Quality Commission has a crucial role to play in ensuring that DEQ takes an orderly, thorough approach to its review of the perennial project. We believe that perennial has no place in Oregon's energy future. By permitting this project, we would be putting our state's own new greenhouse gas rules at risk and would be putting a major new polluter, potential polluter, on life support. We don't need this project. Deny this permit. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right, Stephanie. Uh, thank you, Commission. Uh, the next 
person I have on the sign up list, your display name is Cascadia Wilderness, or I'm sorry, Wildlands. Uh, your line will now be unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, commissioners. Thank you so much for providing this opportunity for comment. Uh, my name is Dylan Plummer. I'm the grassroots organizer with Cascadia Wildlands, a regional environmental nonprofit focused on protecting forests and endangered species and fighting climate change. I'm commenting today on behalf of our organization and our thousands of members throughout the state to voice our support for the DEQ to take strong action against the perennial wind chaser station for flouting Oregon law and beginning construction before receiving adequate permitting. In addition to the perennial project's complete disregard for Oregon law, Cascadia Wildlands and our members oppose this project for its huge climate impacts, which would undermine the state's overall climate goals by generating up uh, 1 million tons or more of greenhouse gas pollution each year and would become one of the largest climate polluters in the state. This raises concerns for Oregonians, uh, not just in Umatilla County, but across the state and uh, folks throughout the region. In light of the impacts that our state is already feeling due to climate change, including climate-driven fires uh, on Labor Day that caused historic dev devastation to communities throughout the state, it is imperative that the DEQ do everything in their power to help reduce emissions. Uh, this project also gives us concern because of the direct emissions of other pollutants, such as volatile organic compounds, which contribute to the formation of smog in Umatilla County and nearby areas. These are all major concerns for DEQ and communities throughout Oregon, and the perennial wind chaser plant demands a careful, detailed approach from the agency. The EQC has a crucial role to play in ensuring that DEQ takes a thorough approach to its review of this project, and this could be an important opportunity for the agency to distinguish itself as taking Oregon's climate goals seriously, and uh, Cascadia Wildlands and our thousands of members uh, sincerely hope that you will take it. Thank you. Great. Thank you for your comments. And uh, thank you, Commission. The next person I have, your display name is listed as Richenda, and you will your line will now be unmuted. Uh, hello. Um, so first of all, I want to thank uh, Dan Sears and 350PDX and others for speaking to the wind chaser and perennial uh, proposals. And um, I'm just mindful of we cannot get to where we're going if we go the way we came. There's simply no future in that direction. Um, I speak now uh, as a member of the Ecumenical Ministries of Oregon. I, my name is Reven, uh, Reverend Rinda Fairhurst. I am an ordained elder uh, in the United Methodist tradition serving in the Pacific Northwest Conference uh, and speaking for the Ecumenical Ministries of Oregon. Oregon. I speak from southwestern Washington and outside my window is the burn scar from the Almeda fire. So I do want to thank you for uh, the report earlier about the fire cleanup. I want to talk about uh, rack a little bit um, about how we have to uh, ensure that we are prioritizing the voices of the most impacted in this process. Uh, there was a comment made earlier, which I appreciate that we really need people at the table and we do need to hear them speak, but it has to be more than just listening to them speak. We actually have to listen and digest and act on this new information that we get, these new voices that are part of our conversation about our future. Um, so that we can learn how to shift our framework so we can actually get to this new and vibrant Oregon, which is what we all hope for and long for. I want to make sure that we look to the fact that we're not trading off um, costs with um, equity. So we have to pay attention to what the true costs actually are for projects like this. So we can't do business if our business is burned down. We can't provide goods and services if our roads are washed out. We, we have to understand that climate is a huge and tremendous cost to our economy. And to actually be fair to businesses, we have to phase out the businesses that are polluting and destroying our earth 
and encourage the growth of businesses that are sustainable and contribute to that thing that I mentioned before, a beautiful and vibrant Oregon. That has to be our goal. And that's not even talking about the human costs, cost of health, the species costs of extinction. Those are incalculable costs. Are those costs really ones that we want to pay? And I don't know about you, but I don't want to go in front of St. Peter when I pass on and explain why I didn't do anything to preserve this beautiful, beautiful earth. 30 seconds remaining. The last 30 seconds, I want to encourage communication. We are going to be asking people to make tremendous change. Those who wish they could get another yacht are going to really be frustrated. And those who are feeling weighed down by the costs of everyday life are also feeling frustrated. So let's kids communicate together about the choices that we have to make looking ahead. Let's work together. Let's find tools together so that we can really have that thing I'll mention yet a third time, a beautiful and vibrant Oregon. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. Okay, Stephanie. Uh, thank you, Commission. The next uh, person I have, your display name is Breach Collective and your line should now be unmuted. Thank you, can you hear me? We can hear you. Great. Uh, well, members of the Environmental Quality Commission, thank you for the opportunity to present public comment today. My name is Nick Caleb, and I'm a climate energy attorney with Breach Collective, an Oregon-based 501c3 nonprofit organization. Today, we joined several other organizations in drawing your attention to the perennial wind chaser station, a proposed 415 megawatt frack gas power plant in Umatilla County <clears throat> that would, if constructed, become one of the state's largest polluting facilities and greenhouse gas emitters. Perennial has already demonstrated a total disregard for the laws of Oregon by beginning construction at their site in violation of the site certificate and without a construction stormwater permit, apparently to avoid an increase in monetary offset fees for new gas plants. Consistent with the governor's executive order on climate change that directs Oregon agencies to exercise any and all authority and discretion vested in them by law to help achieve our greenhouse gas reduction goals, the EQC should ensure that DEQ undertake a thorough review of perennials permit applications and ultimately refuse to permit this facility as it would undermine Oregon's climate goals and opportunities to utilize truly renewable energy sources to power the future. It would be reckless to allow the construction of new fossil fuel infrastructure as the climate crisis continues to worsen. Furthermore, it will undermine public confidence in our democracy if our state agencies allow large polluters to break Oregon laws and financially benefit. Thank you to DEQ and Director Whitman for granting extension on the comment deadline for the construction stormwater permit for perennial. We encourage you to review this permit in line with directives in the governor's new executive order on climate. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Nick. It's uh, good to see you again. Nice to see you too. <laughs> All right, Stephanie. Uh, yes, thank you, Commissioner Addington and Commissioners. Uh, the last name I have currently on my list for people signed up to present comment is Ryan Rittenhouse, and uh, your line should now be unmuted. Yes, thank you, and uh, thank you uh, to the Commissioners for this opportunity for public comment. Um, my name is Ryan Rittenhouse. I work for Friends of the Columbia Gorge, and we are the only <clears throat> nonprofit environmental organization that is specifically focused on preserving and protecting the Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area. Um, I'm here tonight to talk to you, as you can probably guess, about the perennial wind chaser uh, proposal. And uh, we very much support all the comments you've already heard from everybody uh, who's spoken to you uh, about this and against it. Um, this facility would have significant impacts on the gorge airshed. Uh, the, and our national scenic area, which is a national treasure and should be uh, protected uh, from all threats uh, such as perennial. Um, the other thing that I'd like to reiterate um, that Dan Sears mentioned is uh, this sort of hot zone issue in Hermiston. Uh, the Hermiston industrial area there with already has a number of existing industrial facilities, including methane gas power plants that are already creating a significant uh, adverse air situation. Uh, not just for the people living in and around Hermiston, but throughout the region, including the airshed of the gorge. And a huge new facility like this would only greatly compound that already existing problem. 
Um, also, this facility has had, at this point, quite a long and, and convoluted process going on for their permits at FSEC and the Department of Energy. Um, I'm not sure how closely you all have been following that, but uh, they do not have a valid site certificate. Um, their permits are expired and they are retroactively trying to fix those violations, but those attempts will fail. Uh, to be specific, uh, one of the site certificate conditions that the Department of Energy deemed satisfied incorrectly in their September 18th order was that the certificate holder, meaning perennial, uh, has to obtain all their necessary federal, state, and local permits or approvals required for construction, operation, or retirement of the facility. And though the Department of Energy deemed that condition satisfied, obviously it has not been um, since perennial has not gotten their construction stormwater permit. That's the permit we're talking about today. So that's a huge mess, and it involves a number of permit extensions and deadline extensions that also were not valid and are being challenged through the courts. Um, so this this is just kind of a mess of a project, and <laughs> you should deny this permit and require perennial uh, and whoever is behind it, uh, ultimately, if they do want to end up building a facility at this location, they should simply start over from the beginning uh, this process has been going on for way too long for it to, them to be receiving more extensions and receiving new permits at this point. So they should have to start over, get all new permits, and have a clear and transparent process. 30 seconds um, remaining. Thank you very much. Um, however, even that all said, the larger issue here is that any new gas facilities are exactly the wrong thing to develop in, the, in our region. For the sake of our air quality, the climate crisis, public health, everything else you've heard tonight, the future of energy development uh, in our region must be committed exclusively uh, to renewable, sustainable sources, not fossil fuels such as fracked gas that are from even dirtier, more harmful, and more costly sources than ever before. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Stephanie, do we have anyone else? Uh, Commissioner Addington, commissioners, at this time, I see no one else um, in the queue to present comment. 